This is BoomerIncomeIdeas.com and your host, Dan Farnsworth. Hi, and thanks for joining me on this episode of BoomerIncomeIdeas.com. You know, I especially like spotlighting opportunities that have meaningful purpose. And I think that helping boomers stay active and fit uh, going into the third chapter is exactly that. Today, we're going to be talking with Tom Gillis, the National Sales Director of Anytime Fitness. And he has a real compelling story about why you as a boomer might just want to own one of these franchises. Stay tuned. Getting to a healthier place is about more than just going to the gym. It's about bravely taking that first step. A step made easier with the right plan, the right coaching, and the support of those around you. It's about realizing a better life isn't measured in gym minutes. That every step Every choice matters. It's about being helped back up when you fall down and doing things you never imagined possible. The journey to a healthier place starts with a single step and a little help from someone who cares. Hey, Tom, thanks for joining me this morning. Thank you, Dan, for having me. You know, when when I came across this opportunity, uh, someone brought this to me, and I thought at first, you know, why would a baby boomer be interested in a, uh, a, a, fran- or a fitness center? And then I started to really look into it uh, before we talked, and it started to make more and more sense to me. And then as we talked, and you sent me more and more information, I could see where this really made a, a very strong argument for why a baby boomer would be interested in this type of environment. So we're going to talk a lot about that in a few minutes. But before we do, can you tell us a little bit about Anytime uh, Fitness, how it started, how long you've been in business? uh, Absolutely. That kind of thing. Yeah, and um, we were started by our founders, Chuck Runyon and Dave Mortensen, about 15 years ago, just a little over 15. I always talk about it like it's a child that was born. We are just had our 15th uh, birthday, so to speak. And Chuck and Dave, um, they're just two, you know, pretty doggone unique guys. And I've been blessed myself to be here for about 12 of those 15 years. So I've kind of seen the meteoric rise of things for good or for bad and kind of been here for that. But long story short, um, Chuck and Dave owned kind of the stereotypical big box fitness clubs that we all kind of thought of back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, heck, even up, you know, toward close to 2000, those 50, 60, 80, 100, 120,000 square foot facilities that had every doggone amenity under the sun. And that's what people just thought fitness was, right? There, that, was, that was the model. Most of our members, in fact, the vast, vast majority of our members really ironically don't care about those amenities, the swimming pool, the basketball courts, the racquetball courts, saunas, climbing walls, you name it, that everyone just assumed you had to have that in a quote unquote fitness center to attract folks. Long story short, they figured, hey, there must be a better way to skin a cat, or there might be. Sounds easy now. It certainly wasn't easy then, I'm assuming. And they basically just pulled out three components. They said, let's take a small footprint 4,500 to 6,000 square foot, that core cardio and strength area that our members truly love and yearn for. Let's make that the basis of our model. Building block number two, probably even more pertinently and a little more revolutionary, as crazy as that sounds, Chuck and Dave quickly realized, like most business owners in any endeavor, and even if you haven't owned a business, this sort of makes sense, that the bane of their existence was the personnel piece. So Chuck and Dave said, geez, uh, in addition to that small footprint, if we can't do away with our personnel headache because they need a veritable veritable army of workers to run those big boxes, right? Right, They said, if we can't do away with it, how the heck at least do we minimize it? All of our gyms have a keyless entry system, which means your members, when they sign up, they have a key fob. And when they flash that key fob in, in front of the reader, that lets them into the gym as long as they are paid up. So that means they have 24 seven access, needless to say, but it also means that you as an owner have a very minimal staffing piece. You need about one to one and a half full-time employees to be your managers of that gym. You'll see how that low overhead plays into the fact that, gosh, in our gyms, you need about 500 members is all, give or take, to break even, rather than the thousands and thousands that people often think about when you're thinking about your stereotypical stereotypical big box club. The third thing that Chuck and Dave did right out of the chute is they, this used to be a little more sizzle than substance, but now that we're 15 years old and have about 3,500 gyms around the world, um, this is now a very tangible benefit. They figured from day one, if your key fob that lets you into your home 
Home Gym can also automatically let you into all the other Anytime Fitness gyms around the world. That would be kind of a neat benefit. So that global reciprocity, which we now say because we truly are global, was the third key component. So that's a lot of hot air about where we've come from, but it kind of positioned us, and we'll talk about this later, what it, you know, kind of what that means for how our owners, their attributes, and what our members' attributes are. It positioned us very nicely. As, as, uh, yeah, so that's, that's where we came from. Well, it certainly validates your success and, and, and your concept, just as I said. Let's talk a little bit about actually operating that concept. And, you know, before the program, we talked a little bit about uh, how many of your owners, your franchise owners, as a percentage, are like me. They're over yeah. 50 or over 60 as, as compared to that, uh, that uh, earlier Arnold Schwarzenegger type of guy that you know, sure. used to meet you at the front door all buffed out. And you thought that, uh, well, this is intimidating. I, I'm not going to stay here. How many baby boomers are involved as owners in Anytime Fitness? And let's, after you tell me that, let's talk a little bit about what they do. Yeah, that's a, and by the way, it takes one to know one. So I am uh, right in your category too. You're better preserved than I am, but I think we're not too far <laughs> apart. So, but uh, ironically, um, it, our, our model and whatnot, it, it has resonated across generations, dare I say. But uh, in strictly in terms of baby boomers, I, I don't, I would say we're in the 35 to 40 percent range of folks 15 above that are our owners. And I think um, there are a couple reasons why that's resonated so well. Um, first and foremost, uh, it's a relatively low startup cost, easy for me to say, but in terms of the grand you know, spectrum of startup costs for business, be it franchising or otherwise, you're going to get up and running if you come to the table with about $100,000 liquid. The backgrounds of our owners are absolutely all over the board. I mean literally, if you ask me about any walk of life, I could probably think of a man or a woman that came from that industry that is now a successful franchisee of ours. By the time you get to be our age, if nothing else, hopefully you've do, you know, developed at least a modicum of common sense and maybe business savvy or feel for people, that sort of thing. This is a people business and I do think folks, as we get older, you develop that sense and that's really the key to making these doggone gyms hum. We provide you a very simple recipe and formula, and then it's pretty much up to you uh, with our coaching, a ton of coaching, fairly easy to run with. As a matter of fact, uh, as I was kind of researching this, this subject, I was noticing different things, and you know, I live in Florida now, and if you go to any McDonald's or uh, Dunkin' Donuts shop, mm -hmm. you'll see the older guys, you know, the, the 75 to, to 90, basically, mm -hmm sitting at those tables, but you don't see the retired baby boomers sitting sure. at those tables. But I noticed that our generation, instead of sitting at that Dunkin' Donuts, is at the gym and they're, they're, they're socializing among mm -hmm. themselves at the gym. That's There's, a great point. But I happen to notice that there just seems to be this, this transformation where the baby boomers are concerned, we're going to live 25 to 35 more years beyond 65. Hi, I'm Sean Seitz, and I'm about to start living my dream. 34 years ago, I started working at Home Depot in Orlando, Florida, loading cars for $4 an hour. Hey, Mike, how are you? Hey, John, how you doing today? Good to see you. I climbed the corporate ladder, and eventually I became a regional manager. How are things going? Great. It's been a blast, but I'd like to spend more time doing what I enjoy the most, which is my passion, which is the fitness industry. Eight years ago, almost to the day, we bought our first Anytime Fitness franchise. Yeah, don't spare any horses. I really love getting to know our members and helping them lead a healthier lifestyle. You can be nice to Maggie. But I haven't been able to spend as much time with our members as I'd like to, because I've been busy working in the corporate world at Home Depot. But all that's changing now. After 34 years at Home Depot, I'm retiring, and I get to spend more time in the fitness industry. All right, so now let's talk about it in the, in the context of being a business. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the day in the life of a franchise owner. You mentioned uh, a manager and maybe a couple of associates. Uh, is this a business that the franchisee needs to be directly involved in uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, I should say? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or is this a business that he can kind of get up and running and then kind of step away and uh, periodically kind of manage, but it's not uh, a full-time job? Terrific question comes up with every virtually every prospect my sales team ever deals with. We are literally split about half and half on that. We have 45, 50% of our owners who do roll their sleeves up and they are at least a portion of that 1.5 
uh, person full-time equivalent, right? And sometimes even if they, they do it initially just to kind of get a feel for things and then ease out, we also have folks, Dan, who come to us absolutely out of the chute like you know what i've stockpiled a little bit some resources and i'm looking for something to invest in i like the fitness industry in general uh, i like your model you know what it's going to be one of several investment vehicles i have we have half of our folks come to us and say i'm going to literally from day one hire that one or one and a half full-time equivalents doesn't mean i'm you know not paying attention to the business but i am literally physically not in the gym ironically i didn't want to bore you with this but i've like i said been here about 12 years after being here for about three, I got jealous of the folks I was selling to, literally, no more, no sure. less. Yeah. So I grabbed a couple college buddies who also happened to live here in Minneapolis, and of course they thought I was nuts and I drank the Kool-Aid and all that sort of thing. And this right. is, you know, this is quite a while ago, nine years ago. I said, you guys are going to think I'm nuts, but we got to look into the ownership side of things. And long story short, fortunately, all three of our day jobs keep us very, very busy. So we opened, a, you know, bought a territory, opened a gym. Fortunately, it went well. We did another, another. We had six at one point, mm. and the, none of the three of us ever set foot in any one of the six for a single second, which doesn't mm. mean if you do, it's a bad idea. It just, you know, plays to your question that either fork is fine. Yeah, and also uh, validates that it's a good concept when the person – uh, promoting the concept is actually an owner themselves. Now, how do you, you, you've opened the doors, how do you get people coming in the doors? Yeah, um, we are, by definition, you are going to, this sounds, uh, it's probably commonsensical, you know, with the size and scope of our gyms, they're not gigantic big boxes. I would say in a, I'm looking, you know, where you're from or kind of any sort of, you know, quote unquote, decently sized urban or metro area, you're going to get about 90 to 95% of your members from within a mile and a half, two mile radius of your gym. It is still convenience, convenience, convenience driven. Any fitness uh, center is. Mm -hmm. So long story short, because that's our draw, um, our marketing efforts, which I'm not smart enough to spearhead, we've got a tremendous marketing team that is, they are unbelievable, right? But it's, it's very guerrilla oriented, if that makes any sense. Question sheet, you had a great question about, hey, how many folks, so they come to your door, Tom, you know, how many mm -hmm. turn into members? For us, and I don't think it's unlike most fitness centers, but gosh, because of that warm feel of our gyms and kind of that corner coffee shop, if you can get people to your front door to take a peek, you're going to convert about 80, 85% of those folks to members. So that's really, that's the rub, is to get them to come see you. Now, you mentioned uh, capitalization, and you said for somewhere around 100000 I, I noticed <laughs> on the, the uh, uh, franchise page, you listed a, a, an outline that ranged from like 114000 to 677000 Yep. That's a very wide uh, distance. What's the difference? Yep, perfect question. Um, in franchising, as you're well aware, you have to cover every possibility under the sun that someone could enter your business under, which is good, right? That's that's what you want is full disclosure. Right. So um, when I said 100, e e most of our folks right now, this is, by the way, this has varied over time, but right now, for whatever reason, I would say 60, 70, 80% of our folks are funding things through an SBA loan. We, right. we fund things under a variety of mechanisms. We've got a lot of, not to beat our own chest, but because of our volume, we've got a lot of the skids greets with a lot of lenders. The SBA right now, I um, hope the uh, big brother isn't listening, is a, is a very good program. It used to be, I used to cringe when my prospects went into the SBA hopper, so to speak, because was always a good program, but man, it was so bureaucratic and took right. forever. You always need one more piece of paper, et cetera, et cetera. So long story short, uh, oops, sorry, to answer your question on the range, if if you were to uh, say, you know what, I'm one of the fortunate few, Dan, I've got more liquid cash or liquidity spilling out of my pockets than I know what to do with, and I don't want to finance anything, either via the SBA or an equipment leasing program, and I just want to say to heck with it, I'm going to go on a shopping spree and buy every single thing in my gym, carte blanche, I'm just going to write a check for it, and oh, by the way, that 4,500 to 6,000 square foot space that maybe used to be a blockbuster video or who knows what that's perfectly mm -hmm. situated, right? I also have enough liquidity where I'm not going to arm wrestle with Mr. or Ms. Landlord when it comes time to do the tenant improvements or the, the build out. I'm just going to say to heck with that. I'm also going to pay for every penny of the build out. Our build outs aren't real complicated, but any commercial construction gets into 45, 50 bucks a square foot. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, if you say, because I want to keep my rents lower, because I know landlords amortize those build out costs in, if they cover it, 
that's good for me because I don't have to use my own money, but guess what? They'll, it'll up my rent. All those sorts of things. If you decide to pay pe every penny lock, stock, and barrel for everything, you could get up into that 600 range. In all my years here, I probably helped a thousand folks myself get going. I've had plenty of folks with decent liquidity, but most of them say, I want to leverage it, use someone else's money because I want to save mine to do a second and a third. I've had probably less than five folks say, I'm just going to carte blanche and pay cash for everything. Yeah. So circles back, an SBA injection for us is about, it's 15% of your total project cost. So even if you're on the high end and your total project cost was 600000 the SBA requires that you inject 15% of that. 15% of 600 is 90. So my 100 is even high, but I, when I talk numbers, I like to err on the cautious or conservative side. So if folks have any surprises, they're pleasant ones. So yeah, does, that, does that, that make sense on the capitalization? Sorry yeah. to ramble on on that. No, it does, and and you know, I I really appreciate the fact that you actually sent over the uh, item nineteen. Very yeah. few people do that, so that was yeah. the fact that you were able to to send over this disclosure document that basically shows all the all the numbers, which I think is fantastic. Uh, I really appreciate, it. and I noticed that at a membership level of about five hundred mem members, the operations uh, about break even. At, you you read it perfectly. At a at a about eight hundred and fifty, you got I like the eight hundred and fifty one, not eight hundred and fifty, but eight hundred and fifty one. <laughs> you're at a level where the operation should be generating a net cash, a mm -hmm. net income, of right. about a hundred thousand. It'll do about four hundred and four hundred and forty five thousand in gross, mm -hmm. and you're going to net about twenty six percent, I think. Uh, you, have, yep, twenty three percent, twenty three percent. You bet about a hundred thousand. You read it perfect. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that's, you, you know, your perfect question you asked earlier about are you going to be in the gym yourself or not? Mm -hmm. What you quoted is dead flat on. And by the way, that 851, uh, that's the reason it's 851 and not 850 is because that column, as you, that is literally our average of all of our gyms as of uh, March 31st this past year. As you know, for whatever reason, April 1st is kind of National FDD Day or Franchise yeah. Disclosure Document Day. Yeah. So the, what you're reading will be in play until next, till the end of March 2018. So long story short, that 851, that C student that you're seeing, that's literally the average of our 2,067 gyms who had been open at least 12 months at the time of this printing. And you just nailed it. That $100,500 that you quoted is right on the nuts, pardon the expression. But that's if you hire that full-time manager, right? If you go up a notch and say, you know what, I'm going to work in the gym myself, which 50% of our folks do, obviously then you don't have to pay that person or that person and a half, and it, it bumps up your net take. But you, you read it perfectly. And then uh, the other thing that I really liked is uh, when you went from that to uh, about 1150 you increased to close to 190000 So you exponentially go up because your fixed costs are basically staying the same as you're increasing this this volume so that's important I, am i right in that it looks to me like your uh, the royalties the franchise fees to you are flat they stay the same no matter what my my volume is doing correct uh, that doesn't go up along with my volume they're not paying six percent of the gross or ten percent of the gross or, or whatever they're, they're paying a flat fee so every dollar over that basically is going into their pocket. You couldn't have said it better. I, I, I've been doing this so long, I take that so much for granted. Thanks for pointing that out, because that is a, a very big selling point and differentiator for us. Yeah, it's huge. You know, I, obviously, I'm preaching to the choir, but I don't know what the percentage of royalty-based franchise systems are, but it's got to be 95, I would say, where the, the numbers you kind of tossed out are pretty typical, 6% of your gross, and then they typically have an ad fund as well that's a percentage of your revenues, 2% is kind of a common. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chuck and Dave, just from day one, that's how they set things up, and it's it's obviously the most user-friendly way for franchisees to do business, so we're, we're yeah. proud of it. That's excellent. So, Tom, in wrapping this up, I usually like to ask these questions, the two questions, which mm -hmm. is, uh, can you give me three pros of sure. working with Anytime Fitness, and then also uh, give me at least a couple of cons. Yep. Um, I thought about this a little bit. I think the, the first pro, I wish I could claim that this is just all on us, but it's not. We're embedded. The first pro is we're embedded in a phenomenal industry. Secondly, this is going to sound self-serving, but hopefully our track record sort of speaks for itself, both the numbers and our number of units. Um, we have a very uh, solid model slash recipe, right? Simple, 
but solid. And then the third thing, um, this is the one that gets me choked up a little bit, um, but I think it's kind of our separators. If Again, if we brought those top franchisees in, and again, I'll, I'll pose the same question. If I ask them, I pull them aside individually, say, what do you like about Anytime Fitness? Why has it been good to you? I'm not going to stretch it. They're going to say it's been good to me financially. It was a business opportunity, right? That still trumps all else. But I guarantee you within about two minutes, again, without any nudging whatsoever, and I know what order they would say this, the second thing they would say, you know what, because of that darn keyless entry system and because of our lack of staffing headache, even if it's I delegated that role to someone else or if it's me, if I'm not there or because I need to go to my granddaughter's concert or my grandson's basketball game or I'm going to go somewhere with my spouse for a couple of days or heaven forbid my manager is, the world's not going to stop spinning. Right. Because right. folks can let themselves in and out. You don't want to do that for extended periods. But I think if you ask our folks, they just say from a business ownership perspective, because of that simple little key fob, they're less tied to this business than any other business ownership opportunity they can think of. Dave Mortensen, president and co-founder with Anytime Fitness. Anytime Fitness is the largest co-ed fitness center in the world. We're in about 10 different countries with about 1,900 locations. I'm Chuck Runyon, CEO 2i. We provide an opportunity for an entrepreneur to open up their own health club, which impacts their community and their family and helps people get healthy, but uh, we give them a vehicle to succeed. It's more than just about Anytime Fitness. It's about the people. We take great care in hiring the right people and having the right culture, because if it starts here, we know it's going to ripple out every single club. It's nice to be in a company where you're a part of change, you're a part of the process. It's how much we're inspiring our members. It's a really great, friendly family environment. I've never worked anywhere before where there is the passion involved. We want to make the employee better, helping them be financially healthier, helping them be physically healthier, helping them be spiritually healthier. We, we hope that when they're done with their career at Anytime Fitness, they can say, Anytime Fitness made me better too. And in turn, we know that's going to make the business better. I do have cons, unfortunately. These are good problems to have, but I, I have to point them out. When you have 20, you know, when we have 3,500 gyms, about 2,500 domestically and 1,000 internationally, right? Um, there are going to be areas that are sort of saturated. If you called me today, because we're headquartered here, so this is kind of where the lava flow started. If you called me today and said, Oh, I love your concept, like your track record, like the industry, I think I'd like to open a gym in the Twin Cities area here. I would tell you, Dan, that's a great idea. But guess what? About 67 other people have beaten you to the punch and there's little or no turf left, right? We sell protected areas. That's a con. It's a good problem to have, but uh, it has happened in some areas. So because of that, we sometimes have to be the bearer of bad news to prospects who are extremely fired up about things. Um, those are the, when I think about the cons, when I come to, to my job every day and what my team has, you know, having to tell someone who's really excited about getting into a life altering business or kind of changing their career path or baby boomers who are saying, I want to start something new. Um, that's, that's, that's a con for me, a good problem to have, but, but no doubt a con. Hopefully there's some useful information for folks. Well, Love again. that love to have them reach out to me and i'll go one step further we have discovery days here like most folks do we'll defray the cost for folks love to have them come visit us and, and get a feel for that you know kind of our culture and all that sort of thing so well tom i think this has been a great conversation i think that the uh, viewers are going to be pretty interested in it we're going to put your information a direct link to your website and your phone number and so <laughs> forth in our notes section so that our viewers can get directly in touch with you uh and in the meantime as we go forward, I'd like to stay in touch every once in a while and just kind of see how many boomers are coming on board as these franchise owners. I think that'll be really interesting. And uh, besides that, I'd like to just stay in touch and say hi every once in a while. I would love to do so. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Bye -bye. Take care, Dan. Yep. Bye-bye. 